Hey, it's Matt. I'm back with another 10 by 7 inch transparent watercolor. This is a Numata Long Wing Butterfly. I got photos of this guy at the Hershey Gardens Butterfly House, which had uh, a ton of great, beautiful butterflies to photograph. And uh, so I went in with the macro lens and got a ton of photo reference to paint from. To do this one, I frisketed off only the butterfly and the antenna, and then I did all the rest of the background in several passes. You can see that I was using a number six round brush here, and had a bunch of pre-mixed greens and kind of orangey greens and things like that that I used for dropping in the modeled background. Once I was happy with the overall background, I hit it with the hair dryer to lock in the colors, and then I went about mixing some new greens that I was going to use to wash in the leaf color. Once I had the base color down, I went about glazing in with that same number six round brush some of the major sections of the leaf. And you can see my photo reference off to the left. Um, in doing this, I chose to do the background a little bit differently than uh, the photo. The photo was, was pretty good, but I wanted to have a little bit less of the stark dark green that went blank to just dark green, and I wanted to have some modeling in that to have a little bit more sense of an environment to it. And uh, I thought it would also help bring in some of those colors that would go into the leaf, which were modeled kind of invite you into the background and give a little bit better sense of, uh, of space. And a lot of this was just adding the detail by getting darker as I went with glazes of additional pigment. Knowing that the butterfly was going to have a lot of these orangey yellows, I tried to bring in a fair amount of that into the leaf itself so there would be some color harmonies later on. It's a little hard when doing these where you have it masked off to know exactly what colors you're going to go with. Um, and I was somewhat truthful to the, the photograph. I was trying not to be, you know, totally locked into what had happened in the camera and uh, leave myself some opportunity to change that up when I painted it. And you can see that I had all those greens. This time I was using a, uh, a little well palette and I was kind of using some of the same colors I'd used for the background and then uh, kind of modifying those a bit to put in the major colors of the leaf. Once I was happy with the major portion of that leaf, I went about transferring the rest of the sketch over for the butterfly. It was important to have all these little veins going in on the wing when I transferred this because those are specific to that species. So I wanted to make sure that all those veins were in just the right place and the pattern was right. And so I went about just glazing in the lightest local colors for the, uh, the butterfly. I think almost all of this was done with, uh, at least at this face, with the number two round brush. That was, I think it was brand new at this point, so it was really sharp and I could get in all those little details. And early on in these, when you're just putting in the first washes of color over these, you can work pretty quickly. Um, I try not to go too dark too quickly. I like having some of these uh, kind of approach the lightest color for one section, and then I can always add the detail with the darks as I go. It's, you can't lighten up and do it with a lot of accuracy, so it's always easier to make two passes instead of one if you're as you as you build these. If you go too dark too quickly, you're kind of locked in. And you can see that I didn't frisk it off all the antennae because they were so thin and I knew they were going to go dark toward the head. I left those 
you know, unmasked, and then I would just paint the blacks in on top of those. So I really only needed to frisk it off the portions that were going to be lighter than the rest of the background. So they kind of look like they're floating now, but they didn't in the end. At least I don't think they did. But that was a good way to approach the problem, I thought, for this one. You can see here now that I'm beginning to put in those second layers to build the depth to those darker colors on the butterfly that uh, you've retained some of those lighter areas just in little places but uh, and then you can go darker to build that kind of scaly look to the wings because they really are covered with just thousands of these little faceted scales of color. And I switched over to a 10 watt brush here for some of it when I was doing the fine details. And pretty much bouncing between that uh, sharp number two and the 10 watt for the rest of the painting. You can kind of see just how many little tiny passes of uh, paint end up going in on a, a painting like this. It's just lots of little details and then making many little passes to build up the color in a uh, in what I think is a lifelike um, application of paint. And it's through that many little layers you build up the textures which I think make it look very uh, lifelike and and uh, give it some personality. One of the difficulties with transparent watercolor is maintaining the whites of the paper for, you know, you've got those little crescent of white dots along the edge and highlights in the eyes and the antenna. and if you're doing gouache you can always paint white on top of it but to do the transparent watercolor if you've got white it's the white of the paper so um, knowing how much to spare those areas is uh, it can be difficult and uh, and it's also difficult to paint around all those little edges um, but that that's part of the challenge and part of the fun when you see these done to think that wow that's a, you're painting around those little parts to get it to look right and with these white edges you're actually bringing in little layers of blues and uh, other colors just to build some modeling to that white area so it isn't just stark white that you have a little bit of that scaly pattern to it as it uh, goes on the the wings of the butterfly So at this point I was trying to get that little edging on the wing because um, you actually have these two, two, two of the wings next to each other and trying to get that edge to look right uh, required a lot of fine detail. Um, the 10 aught brush is great for fine detail. The problem with those is that they don't hold hardly any pigments so you're always going back and reloading the brush and remixing colors. They just dry out way too quickly. If I can, I always prefer to use a number two round brush that's really sharp. I'm glazing in you'll see that some of these are 
kind of um, some of the colors I'm putting in are tube colors that you know I'm putting in some cadmium red here or some um, some of the uh, cadmium yellow lights and because you're glazing them in over other colors um, it, it actually is building a richness to it. it normally I'd never just use a tube color on its own but once you're in the to the point of glazing it the rules kind of are a little different for that It's getting pretty close to finished here. A lot of little details on the body and sharpening up edges and trying to get those antennae to look right. Um, it's it's the, the last 10% of the painting takes a long time getting everything just balanced right, putting in your last shadows so you have good separation from the foreground and the background. And, um, and a lot of time just looking at it, seeing if you're right. Well, at this point, I signed it and said it was done. So there it is, a Numata Longwing Butterfly, a 10 by 7 inch transparent watercolor. Thanks for watching. If you have a chance, take a peek at the website and the blog.